Hi, I'm TJ. Um, my pronouns are he, him, and I have an experience of anorexia nervosa, and this is my story. I would say that in terms of my experience when it came to, um, you know, that focus on my body image and the way that I looked, um, it probably started when I made that transition from high school into university. Um, it was a pretty big change for me. Um, I think at high school I was pretty engaged with, um, you know, school life and my friends and my family. I was pretty happy with, you know, the way that I looked and the way that I interacted yeah. with the people around me, which I which was great. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But then making that transition into university, um, it was quite a stressful time for me, the end of high school exams, studying, um, trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. Um, yeah. I think it's, a, it's an it's impactful really time for, for most people. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it came to the point where I, you know, I got into a university that not a lot of my friends or really anyone from my school uh. was going to. And I kind of took that time to maybe create a, a new me. Yeah, um, yeah. And so the way that I I did that was to um, look into what are some things that I might be able to change about myself. Uh -huh. um, and so one of the things was the way that I looked. Um, and I think that kind of sort of created or maybe merged into something that kind of went a little bit out of control. There was a really heavy focus on the way that I looked and uh -huh. um, you know the way that other people maybe viewed me and usually it wouldn't be anything that anyone said to me. It's just what I sort of thought other people uh, might, uh, um, might view me yeah, as. Yeah. Um, and especially on top of that, always seeing in TV shows and on YouTube and um, you know, Instagram and Facebook, there's always, or there always seems to be, um, you know, this perfect person or this perfect young man it looks like this. Um, and I kind of never saw myself in that and so I found myself um, sort of retracting from you know engaging with my friends and my family um, and you know I started to not do too well in uni either um, because my focus was on the way that I looked um, and that made it really hard for me to really engage with anything else that was happening in my life. I would say probably halfway through my first year at uni um, I realised that um, I had this really great group of friends yeah, and yeah. Um, I was missing out on a lot of the things that they were doing and not because you know they weren't asking me, it was because I just wasn't saying yes. Uh -huh. um, I was saying no to probably all of the opportunities and all of the things that were coming my way and I realised that the way that I was feeling probably wasn't conducive to you know doing well in school or um, you know making those connections with the people that I truly cared about um, and it got to the point where there were a lot of changes in my behaviour and my and my appearance and um, my family were, was the one to actually raise the, the concern. The impacts on my family um, of my eating disorder and my sort of my concerns with my body image um, were mostly around just disengagement. I, I would rather not talk to to really anyone. Yeah. Um, I like to keep to myself and I think everyone has those days where they like to maybe have a bit of alone yeah, time, which yeah, is great. Yeah. Um, but when every day is like that or every day looks like mm -hmm. that, um, it kind of doesn't make anyone around you, you know, feel positive, unfortunately. Uh -huh. um, and so something that, you know, I found was that people were trying to talk to me. I would not want to talk back. Um, I wasn't, you know, going out with my family when they'd go into events or doing, you know, this or that. Um, and it was just changes in the way that I engaged. Um, and, you know, there were obviously changes in my appearance um, and changes in my sort of mood and my emotions. I was always feeling tired and um, always nervous. I felt like I was always cold as well. Um, and so all of those little changes led to me feeling just retracted from uh, really anything. The first time that someone in my family had really raised the conversation with me uh, was when my mum actually sort of noticed this change in my appearance and my change in behaviour and actually asked me about it and asked, hey, is, it, you know, is everything okay? Yeah. Um, at the start, I actually didn't want to, to talk about it and um, kind of like, everything's fine, mum, 
it's, I'm okay, it's fine. Yeah. And then I'd walk away to my room and close the door and never to be seen for that night. So I think this whole situation where, you know, my mum or my sister would be checking in on me and me saying everything's fine, probably went on for maybe two or three months. Uh -huh. um, and it, it took quite a bit of effort on their part um, yeah. to really break through and it got to the point where... So they just um, kept coming. They kept, they kept yeah. checking in. I think mm -hmm. I really valued that. Yeah. Um, yeah. They didn't, you know, let go of... Uh -huh. anything there which was really nice um, and after that you know two to three month point they actually suggested you know what maybe we should go to the doctor and you know maybe have a chat about it with them because obviously uh -huh. you know it's okay if you don't want to chat about it with us um, and I took that opportunity and I thought okay sure um, maybe in the back of my mind I thought maybe this will get them off my back and I yeah. can just talk to someone else <laughs> about it yeah. um, and so that experience was actually really reaffirming for me. Um, so I went to our family doctor and we'd, so this is our doctor that we'd had for quite a few years um, and the way that they sort of approached the, the topic of the subject was, was really thoughtful um, and I think in, you know, from my experiences, from what I'd seen on TV or like in the media, um, an experience of talking about your mental health usually is quite clinical and, you know, there's someone with a clipboard and they're taking notes all the time. Um, is that what you were expecting? That's what I was expecting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I know my GP and we're quite close, but uh -huh. that's what I was expecting um, uh -huh. because usually, I'd, you know, you go to your GP and talk about the physical health um, or, you know, you might have a cold or, you, you know, you might have a you know, sore part of your body. Your exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> write a script and that's yeah. over. It's done yeah. with. Um, but with when you talk about your mental health, it's something that I'd never done before. I'd never talk, spoken about my mental health with anyone. Um, uh -huh. I'd struggled to even talk about it with myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I was talking about it with my GP, there was no clipboard inside. Uh -huh. And I thought, oh, that's, what? Is this how it's supposed to be? Yeah. Um, and so I was able to just really just let it all out. Uh -huh. And I think our, the GP really let that space unfold. Uh -huh. They didn't have a whole heap of different questions that they wanted to ask. It was just really about me, you know, talking if I wanted uh -huh. to talk. So just providing that space for you to Exactly, talk. Yeah. yeah. And that was the first sort of, um, foray for me to uh -huh. talk about my mental health with someone um, and I thought well if this is what it's going to be like to maybe get that support that I really need um, maybe I should take it on. So my GP diagnosed me with um, anorexia nervosa uh -huh. um, and so he then um, referred me on uh -huh. to see a psychiatrist um, and so that was a little bit nerve-wracking for me as well yeah, because yeah. you know the GP was someone that I was quite close with um, but the psychiatrist I thought well I've never spoken to a psychiatrist yeah. before what that first gonna look like? Open up about your mental health exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but my GP really made me feel comfortable uh -huh. um, and made it seem like this is you know what it's like you know if you want to talk about your mental health it's it's up to you if you want to uh -huh. you know you say what you want to say um, and the psychiatrist is you know is the same they'll just maybe support you in a, in a different way um, and so I I took that on and I saw the psychiatrist and um, it was a really great experience to be able to talk um, yeah, a little yeah. bit more in depth about uh -huh, the things uh -huh. I was going through um, and maybe what those impacts were on the other parts of my life, whether it was my friends, my family, uni. Um, I think there were some times where um, with that first psychiatrist, um, it was with a clipboard and I kind of felt that I was, you know, might've been assessed rather than being yeah, understood. Yeah, So after that experience with that first psychiatrist, uh -huh. uh, where I kind of sort of stepped into talking about my mental health yeah, with a yeah. mental health professional, um, I kind of realised that maybe that wasn't the right fit for uh -huh. me. Uh -huh. um, and so I actually went and saw a different psychiatrist uh -huh. and that made the world of difference well, for so me. just finding the right relationship. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, so finding that right connection for mm -hmm. me and to actually feel comfortable with the person that I was talking mm -hmm. to meant a lot to me. Um, and I think even now I'm still thinking about the importance of having that connection with someone, even uh -huh. whether or not it's a mental health professional, it might be with your friends or your family but or just, just being able to talk. Being able to, to connect and to then talk about, you know, the different things. It's, it gets easier when you uh -huh. when you talk so about that's what it. I was gonna, in terms of your recovery, what were sort of, what some of the things you noticed as you started to recover, mm. as you started to see the psychiatrist? Yeah, so, more? so as I started to see the psychiatrist more, I really found that there were quite a few changes in, you know, my behaviour and my mood as well. Um, I found myself uh, less, you know, occupied with the with 
the way that I looked, I found myself um, slowly but surely engaging with my friends again <laughs> um, and building those connections up, um, <laughs> which was really, really nice and were your as people, well. And were people receptive to that as you started to build those? Yeah, so um, so with my friends and family, when I started to re-engage with them, yeah. they were so receptive. They were yeah, like, yeah. "You're back! Oh my gosh, yes! Yeah, let's you know, let's yeah. do this, let's do that." Uh -huh. um, and I think for me, from that sort of high school phase where I was really engaged and you know, uh -huh. you know, doing all of the extracurriculars, on, I was on the debating team. Um, I like to call it structured arguing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then when going into that first year of uni and I was so disengaged and it was such a change from wow, who yeah, I, I, was, yeah. I would call, I would say I was an extrovert when I was in high school and then going into that introvert stage and um, that's what made me sort of realise that something it had changed here. Like it didn't feel like me yeah, at all. Yeah. Um, and then slowly but surely I was getting back into that, you know, extrovert stage where I usually am, you know, talking and laughing and sometimes you can't really shut me up because I'm talking all the time. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, I really started to build those connections again, which, wasn't, which was one of the main impacts of seeing that psychiatrist. That message of keep going and you know, keep searching, for me, yeah. that was really important to, uh, to, to find, find something, find right. to, to find the right psychiatrist, to find the right support. Um, and I think in this whole journey, there's been a lot of searching for something. Um, and I found that, you know, with that right support um, and I found that you know even through uni I was searching for something that would re-energize me and to uh -huh. really you know build that passion up and uh -huh. I found that after looking for quite a bit um, and so I found they kind of don't give up so they don't give up and I think yeah. it's totally um, yeah. it's totally cliche it's no, a lot easier yeah. to say than to actually uh -huh. do um, but when you sort of reframe it into continuing to search for that thing that you're that you that you're looking for and sometimes people don't know what they're looking for but it's uh -huh. about maybe dabbling into different things and not being afraid to say maybe this isn't right for me what if I try something so, else and yeah. I think there's always or there has been that sort of um, that focus on you know, this is what you receive and so that's it. But it's actually not like that at all. Uh -huh. Like you can keep uh -huh. going, you can keep searching, you can look into other things. So there's choices. There's and... choices. Mm -hmm. There's so much choice uh -huh. when it comes to, you know, seeking support um, and receiving support uh -huh. as well. Um, and that's something that I really, really valued. There were quite a few barriers when it came to me um, sort of understanding what I was going through as well as seeking and accepting support. Um, one of the barriers was, you know, as a young man, there's a certain, um, you know, a thing that, you, that we're striving to be. Um, and I kind of found myself, you know, hearing about when eating disorders or body image challenges were coming up in the media or on Facebook or like wherever it was, um, it was always young women and I, you know, I, I acknowledge that. Mm -hmm. um, so just being male was a barrier because yeah, of the perception. That exactly, women, yeah. yeah. I think um, being, uh, being male was um, made it a little bit tougher for me uh -huh. to actually reach out for support because I actually didn't see myself in anything, uh -huh. any of the supports that I was sort of seeing on the, mm -hmm. um, in the media and when people were talking about um, eating disorders uh, like online and in TV, they were usually focusing on young women and uh -huh. I kind of found myself thinking, what, what about me? <laughs> I wasn't quite yeah. sure where I fit into all Age of that. that. So in addition to you know, being male yeah. um, and experiencing an eating disorder, I found that you know, my cultural background uh -huh. um, made it quite tough. Coming from a cultural background where usually mental health isn't spoken about, yeah. um, you know everyone has mental health. But you know if there's if you're having a bit of a tough time of you know you're not feeling too well, usually it's you, you don't really talk about it. You yeah. kind of lock it away in a box and you kind of deal with it on your own. You don't tell anyone about uh -huh. it. Um, and for me, that was a barrier because I, I didn't want to talk to any to yeah, my family yeah, about yeah. it because I thought well, what, I, we don't do that. We, just we don't do, we yeah. don't talk about that. You <laughs> yeah. you deal with that and yeah. you do it on your own. Yeah. Um, and I know that. You know, for me, like I said, I felt quite lucky that my family were the ones to actually raise it with yeah. me. But um, if they hadn't raised it with me, I probably wouldn't have raised it with them. Uh, I totally understand that, um, uh, you know, some people might be coming from a cultural background mm -hmm. where talking about mental health might just not be the norm. Uh, they might just not, you know, have that opportunity to talk mm -hmm. about it with their friends or their family. Um, but there is always someone that you can talk to uh, about your mental health, about the things that you're going through. Um, and I acknowledge that, you know, I was quite lucky that my family were really responsive, but there are places, you know, like hotlines and like going online to actually have a chat to someone mm -hmm. about 
what's going on because there are people that experience you know challenges with their mental health yeah, and I'm yeah. one of them yeah. and you know it's really important that we start that conversation mm -hmm. we keep it going because um especially young people that you know are coming from a cultural background where mental health isn't really spoken about it doesn't mean that it's not there yeah. yet yeah. um and so I find it really important to keep the conversation uh -huh. going and you know you know, doing a bit of research and actually finding out where are some places that we might be able to talk to. If we can't talk to our friends, if we can't talk to our family, there's always other people yeah, so that we can talk to. That exactly, yeah. Them. When I was feeling probably um, in my sort of worst mood, um, I found it the easiest to just sort of disconnect from everyone because I thought I don't want to you know bother them with the things that I'm going through and I also don't want to explain what I'm going through yeah, either yeah. Um, and so I think over time I've really realized that importance of connection uh -huh. um, that it's okay to it's okay to not be okay and it's okay to be able to, you know, to talk to someone about, um, you know, what you're going through. But even if you're not comfortable, um, for me, that's not really the conversations I have with my friends. It might just be about, you know, going to a movie yeah, or like yeah. going out for lunch or something. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and I found having that connection with someone that actually builds up the whole sort of that social side of things mm -hmm. has been really important uh. um, to actually know that, oh, I actually have these people that I really care about and they really care yeah, about me. Yeah. Um, I think that's, I found that really important. Uh -huh. Yeah. My life now is quite different to uh, my mm. life when I was experiencing anorexia. Mm. Um, I feel like now I am able to give myself a little bit more time to, uh -huh. um, to recharge and I uh -huh. actually take the time to understand what does recharging look like to yeah, me. Yeah. I think in the past, I think recharging, I don't know, I don't know what that is. I don't, I don't have a, play, a role to play in that. But now it's about you know, delving into things that might in, might, that I might enjoy. Um, so whether it's, um, you know, hanging out with my friends, whether it's, um, you know, reading a book and um, acknowledging that I also need time to myself. Um, I think it's a whole combination mm. of um, doing activities that I enjoy worked in with making sure that I have time for myself as well. Yeah. Um, I think I usually am the type of person where I'm always go, 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 go. And I've got so many different things on at the same time, um, but trying to also peel it back a little bit um, and sort of have different activities that I um, might actually be able to put a little bit more of my self-care game on. Yeah, it's like um, time out. And exactly, yeah. Um, and I think over the last maybe few years, I've really started to try new things uh, as well. I've said yes to a few more things and leaned into a few more things as well. Um, I recently started rowing, um, uh, which was really interesting. Um, yeah. I don't think I have the upper body strength to do that, but I still try it. you enjoying it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and again, a, a big part of that is around that connection. So I'm connecting with a whole group of people uh -huh. um, and I'm doing this new thing where I'm getting a little bit active as well. Uh -huh. um, it's something that I've identified that I enjoy with rowing. It was a totally new thing for me. I hadn't tried it before uh -huh. um, and I thought, why not give it a go? Yeah, um, I, that you, exactly. Yeah. I think I also feel like the stars aligned when I saw an, uh, a post pop up on my Facebook and it was about rowing. I uh -huh. thought, oh, maybe is this something I can maybe try? <laughs> yeah. um, so I gave it, a, gave it a shot and uh -huh. it was actually one of the best things that I'd done um, uh -huh. with my free time. And um, I know that, you know, sometimes I have to wake up really early to, to do it. Um, but I, it always puts me at peace where I'm, you know, I'm out on the river, I'm able to sort of, um, you know, work within a team, but also maybe think about, you know, reflect on what's yeah, been going yeah. on and think about what's happened in the last week, think about what's going to happen next week um, and really put things into perspective as well, which I've really enjoyed. Yeah. Um, so in terms of my experience and the things that I've learned um, about, you know, what I've valued and what would have been really helpful to me in the past is to um, be okay with, um, you know, sitting with emotions and, you know, because sometimes we do need to maybe reflect on what's going on to be able to speak about it. Um, and I think for me, that's been really important where I'm able to be like, okay, so maybe this is what's going on and I do need to have that chat with someone. Um, and I know for me, I usually am the one 
to you know offer support to someone else if they need it yeah. um but sometimes i just don't have the capacity to no, no. um and so also being you know really kind to yourself and yeah, being like yeah. yeah everyone's talking about offering support to other people if they need it but you know if you uh, don't have the capacity it's okay to 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 take care of yourself yeah, as well those boundaries exactly yeah reason. Having those boundaries when it comes to um, understanding, you know, where you're at in your yeah. own journey, because yeah, sometimes yeah. people aren't able to provide mm -hmm. support, mm -hmm. but it might even be just that social support where you're hanging out with someone. Um, I think that's been really valuable for me, whether it is me hanging out with someone to yeah. offer a bit of support or someone hanging out with me as well, which I really want. Yeah.